Hello guys, it's Danny from Dance Tech, and in this video guys, I'm going to be bringing you my updated guide on how to overclock an Intel i5 or i7 processor. Now this will also work for the overclockable i3s, although not a lot, and also a lot of the AMD unlocked Black Edition processors that you can also overclock. Now this guide is supposed to be relatively simple, I am deliberately not going into the advance of overclocking, because I could then potentially make a 1 hour or 2 hour video, because there's a lot to overclocking, especially on a lot of the other chips where overclocking back then was just a little bit more advanced. These days it seems to be very, very simple. You up the multiplier, and as soon as it becomes unstable, up the voltage, and just keep going until you feel that you're at a speed that you like, or kind of hit a brick wall, or until the temperatures of your CPU do get a little bit uh, toasty. There we are. Now one thing I want to mention before I do get into the guide, you do want to make sure you have a high-end CPU cooler. I'm currently uh, rocking the Noctua NHD15, it's a dual tower cooler with two 140 by 150 millimeter fans. So high-end cooler does feature six heat pipes I believe, so it's a very very high-end cooler and if anything it does rival uh, the 240 and 280 millimeter liquid cooling units. So do keep that in mind. So you do need a good cooler. If you have got low noise adapters strapped onto your um, coolers, do feel free to take them off. You will get better temperatures with them off, of course. So yeah, without further ado, we're gonna jump into the guide. As I said, it's supposed to be relatively simple so you guys can follow along. And yeah, we're just gonna cover the basic principles of upping the voltage and the multiplier. And that in turn, uh, will just give you a very, very nice uh, simple overclock. It's going to be nice and easy to understand and you are going to get, of course, some very, very good results from it. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So people, to get started, you want to make sure your system is powered off so you can access the BIOS before booting. So first things first, to access the BIOS, you want to keep tapping the delete key on your keyboard as the PC boots. This will get you into the BIOS just after the splash screen. Now, if you have an LED backlit keyboard, you can start tapping the delete key as soon as the lights turn on. Just as a disclaimer, overclocking doesn't damage personal files nor operating system files as such, however it is good practice to back up important files that you can't afford to lose. Now as for the damage to your computer hardware, there is a certain risk element to overclocking. I'll get onto the temperature and voltage limits on Haswell chips near the end. Just be realistic in terms of what you want to achieve and search at what others are getting if you are using a different CPU to myself in this tutorial. So back to the BIOS, each is a little different, however settings for the multiplier, core voltage and fan speed will be in your somewhere. Generally it'll be under MIT, like in my case, under controls for the CPU and memory, or simply under an overclocking tab. Now your motherboard manual can help you find all these settings, so grab it from your motherboard box if you built your machine yourself, or bring up a digital version on your mobile phone from the manufacturer's website. Also, while you're here, be sure to set your fan speed to normal or standard from any speed reducing modes like silent or quiet modes. Also, you want to completely disable any kind of automatic boosting features like Intel's Tebo Boost. This will interfere with the manual overclock and greatly increase the voltage, making temperatures skyrocket as you reach the higher clock speeds. The basic principle behind overclocking is to increase the multiplier on unlocked overclockable chips until it becomes unstable. Once it does, you can simply increase the voltage to the chip to make it stable again. Now once it's stable, you want to check the temperatures and decide if you're happy with the level of overclock. Now I'm going to be overclocking the i7-4790K to 4.3, 4.5 and 4.7 GHz individually from the stock frequency of 4 GHz. This chip is a Devil Canyon chip and generally can be overclocked quite far. So to get started, we're going to dive into overclocking this chip to 4.3 GHz, so I want to increase the multiplier from... 40 to 43 and then set a manual voltage. I believe 1.23 volts should be a good voltage to start with. If you're not sure what to set yours to, feel free to copy mine if you have the same chip or do some googling to see what others have had luck with. Also, once you've done this, you can reset your system by exiting the BIOS and make sure to apply the settings and reboot. Once you've booted up, you'll want to install some stress testing software. I personally recommend the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility for Intel chips as this has some pretty good stress testing software built in and can also allow for benchmarking and even changing of the multiplier and voltage in the actual software. Although for this tutorial, we're going to be going from the BIOS just for simplicity. So as I've been chatting, the stress testing has been going on for 5 minutes and the CPU seems to be stable. Time to shut down and decrease the voltage. So now we're back in the BIOS, we're going to be decreasing the voltage from 1.23 to 1.20 and stress test the system again with the same software. Now fast forwarding 15 minutes, the 4.3 GHz overclock seems to be working fine at 1.1 volts also, time to decrease the voltage again. So we've just finished testing at 1.09 volts and the CPU still seems to be stable. Next up we have 1.08 volts, of which I can say does result in the system crashing, in this instance it's a blue screen. 
Just for heads up, a blue screen is designed to prevent damage to hardware and is not a problem at all, it won't stay with you. If anything, it's a prompt that you have lowered the voltage too much and that the CPU cannot work at the given frequency. So now I've found that 1.10 volts is the lowest we can go for 4.3 gigahertz. We can set the voltage to that and run these stress tests for a couple of hours to validate that the CPU is definitely stable. You can also go ahead and play your favourite video games or even do some video editing. It all contributes towards stress testing as long as you're doing something that requires a CPU to get worked up. That now concludes our 4.3 GHz overclock. As for the 4.5 GHz overclock, the same principles apply, so I'm going to be going over this one relatively quickly. Now for starters, you want to set the multiplier to 45 and set the voltage to a higher figure than what the 4.3 GHz overclock was stable at. I started with 1.28 volts again. I found this frequency got unstable at 1.15 volts, so 1.16 volts was the stable point for me. With the CPU now running at a higher voltage, you will now have a higher heat output. You want to check the temperatures of your CPU using a program like Core Temp while stressing the system. You find if you have a pretty good cooler, the voltage will be the limiting factor versus the cooling solution. Of course, this will not be the case if you are sticking with the stock AMD or Intel cooler or a basic cooler like the Hyper 212X from Cooler Master, although this will definitely allow you to get up to 4.5 GHz with an i7 4790K. Lastly, as for the 4.7 GHz overclock, you'll want to set the multiplier to 47 and increase the voltage again. I again started with 1.28 volts, but knew the tipping point was going to be pretty close. The CPU is stable at this frequency until I dialed the voltage to 1.23 volts, resulting in the CPU being stable at 4.7 GHz at 1.24 volts. The maximum temperature for that stress testing scenario was 70 degrees. I would recommend not exceeding 80 degrees on modern Intel processors. As for the voltage, I would not recommend going over 1.3 volts, although some avid overclockers will go up to 1.35 volts. This will, of course, further increase temperatures and decrease the lifespan of your processor over time. Just before I get back in front of the camera, here are the notes I took when overclocking at the three frequencies. It's important to take notes so you can remember what voltages you were and were not stable at. I probably could have gone to 4.8 gigahertz, so I would have probably needed to increase the voltage by a large amount, resulting in the temperatures really skyrocketing. 4.3 GHz on my system was stable at 1.09 volts at 54 degrees, 4.5 GHz was stable at 1.16 volts at 62 degrees, and 4.7 GHz was stable at 1.24 volts at 70 degrees. And now, let's conclude on camera. So guys, that concludes my overclock of my i7-4790K. Now, as mentioned, um, you will not be getting the same results as I do. Uh, you might, your processor might need a little bit more voltage, um, resulting in it being a little bit hotter, or you might even need a little less voltage. This is one main reason I say not to copy someone's settings online, just because you might have to increase or decrease your voltage. If you're having to decrease your voltage, chances are you can actually go a little bit faster than some guy's got his processor online. Um, probably at the same voltage, or just a tiny bit more. So. This is the thing, it's all about the silicon lottery. Every processor is different, and to kind of get into the whole um, overclocking thing, you can up the voltage and the multiply and kind of have just a really random stab at it, or as I said, go from someone's guide online to see what they're getting their processor to at a set of voltage and put that into your BIOS. If it didn't work, up the voltage, and you're probably gonna be stable. If not, you can um, up it even more, or you can decide to keep at the voltage and decrease by 100 megahertz, that will typically make you stable. Um, so hopefully this video has not been too confusing. My last video on overclocking got, I think, is it 130 or 140,000 views? So yeah, I really wanted to make a, an updated video for that. And if you guys have asked for that in the comment section for many, many of my videos. Yeah, Dan, when's a new overclocking video? Here it is, hope you've enjoyed. So thanks for watching guys, uh, feel free to like, comment and also subscribe. If you don't actually pick up the NHD15, I will have it linked in the description. And I think I'm also gonna link the i7-4790K and also the new Skylake i7, which is the 6700K. They're both amazing chips for overclocking and very, very fast as well with them being i7s. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions in the comment section below and um, that's gonna be about it. So thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, comment and also subscribe. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.